Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Upgrade. Upgrade is the latest in the artificial intelligence sci-fi genre. A genre that has been very hit or miss. So honestly, didn't really know what to expect going in, into this film. Plus, it was produced by Blumhouse, and most of the AI sci-fi films have that tinge of horror. And then when you add in Blumhouse, seems like a nice little robotic horror film to me. So that, that made me a little bit more excited. And in the end, I'm going to classify Upgrade as what feels like it's going to be a bit of a guilty pleasure film. So let's go ahead and talk about positives first. The biggest positive in the film is the visuals. I think the effects all were done very well. The practical effects where we did have bodies opened and some blood and gore, they all looked great. The special effects looked very good. And what is key to AI sci-fi films, the set design was really cool. Some innovative, kind of cool, different designs to old, tired ideas. And that's kind of what this film was a lot of. There were some new designs to old tired ideas. But I loved the like Chip's robotic voice who was voiced by Simon Maiden. I thought he was fantastic and I actually thought the back and forth between the Chip and our main character were really fun, really funny. It added a whole lot of fun camp self-awareness to the film that it desperately needed. And I think that campy, self-aware undertone is what pushes this into guilty pleasure territory because if it had played it completely straight, if it had tried to just be a really serious sci-fi action film, it would have been a hot mess. But it was self-aware, it had some fun, and in the end it ended up being fun for me. I think Betty Gabriel was by far the standout out of our live action cast, a non-vocal cast. She was really good, really charismatic, and I hope to continue seeing her build off of these past few years of Blumhouse production style smaller horror films. And then we get to the ending. The end leads you into the twist you call from the very beginning. But then, it takes you on a couple other twists that make it a little bit more fun. The end just goes completely overboard in a somewhat cliched way, but it still ended up being pretty fun. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use that as a segue into the negatives on the film. This movie is nearly nothing original. It is a Frankenstein of a bunch of movies we have seen before. The obvious map work and framework of it all, Robocop. But then we get elements of Blade Runner thrown in. We get elements of iRobot thrown in. We get elements of every single AI film ever thrown in. And then we mix in some 1999 idle hands. <laughs> this film really did feel like a hodgepodge that collected all of the tropes and all of the story beats from all of these other films threw them into a blender and made this robotic soup. If not for that self-awareness, it really would have been a robotic watch itself. And then we get to the technical aspects of filmmaking. So the effects were cool and the innovative camera work was actually really nice to see and it added a new element. Production design was good, but that script was terrible. Oh my gosh, this script is really horrible. All of the dialogue is really poor. The score and soundtrack is like the 99 cent bin version of the Blade Runner soundtracks. Uh, it just didn't work at all. And the lighting, the lighting is so all over the place and almost non-professional. It's not completely horrible. It just brings everything down a bit. So from the stale idea of it all to those technical aspects, this felt like it should have been a 1980s film. It would have been innovative. It would have been amazing if it had come out 20 or 30 years ago. And the performances outside of Betty Gabriel were not good, like at all. Our lead is played by Logan Marshall Green and I thought he was actually horrible. He has a couple of fun moments 
that he kind of sells, but it was just this weird overacting. I think he did some of the physical stuff well and some of like the physical selling of the humor okay. Oh, but that line delivery was not good. And none of our background characters were any good either. So into the end, this does feel like a film you have seen many times before. It feels like a film that was released decades ago. But it injects just enough humor and just enough self-awareness, just enough life into this robotic framework to make it a guilty pleasure watch. So if you like sci-fi and if you like artificial intelligence movies, give this a matinee. It's fun. I think you'll enjoy yourself well enough. You'll have a good enough time that you won't regret it. Otherwise, this makes for a nice rental. That's where its budget feels like it should be, is in the rental reign. And it has enough action, it has some cool kills, it has some cool visuals that you'll have a good time watching it as a rental and come out thinking like, yeah, that was, that was a pretty solid little flick. So that is my review of Upgrade. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see Upgrade? And what is your favorite artificial intelligence film? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Mwah! Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!